trash talking has long been a practice in the NFL. From Chuck Bednarik yelling at the unconscious body of Frank Gifford to Cam Newton commenting on Clay Matthews' film habits. Let's look at the best trash talkers that the league has ever seen, then scientifically determine if all that gum clapping affects the players on the field. And that's all coming up right now. Before we determine if trash talking does anything other than cause broken kicking nets, let's look at the best trash talkers in NFL history. Steve Smith always had a chip on his shoulder. Whether it was his lack of height or third round draft position, it felt like he always had something to prove and he showed it at every opportunity that he got. Smith was as vocal a player as there ever was, but sometimes it's the nonverbal trash talking that works best. When Smith beat Fred Smoot and hauled in a long touchdown against the Minnesota Vikings back in 2005, he got in the end zone and started rowing an invisible boat, a reference to the Vikings love boat scandal from a year earlier. Smoot specifically was a ringleader in the incident and Smith didn't seem to hesitate to remind him. One of Steve Smith Sr.'s most iconic trash talking moments came eight years later in 2013 when the Carolina Panthers faced the New England Patriots in front of a national audience on Monday Night Football. After making a clutch catch against the Patriots cornerback Aqib Talib, Smith shouted, I up, son, I up." as he strutted away. Those three words became a catchphrase that epitomized Smith's brash confidence and ability to back up his words with exceptional performances. Now, if there ever was a match for Steve Smith's bravado, it was Aqib Tlaib. When you look back at Tlaib's long and storied career, there's one moment that comes to mind above all else, and it's not one of his 10 pick sixes or his Super Bowl 50 victory. When the Broncos hosted the Raiders in the 2013 regular season finale, Tlaib was tasked with covering Michael Crabtree. Crabtree and Tlaib had a history, and Tlaib took exception to the Raiders' accessories, calling it a fashion show and vowed to snatch Crabtree's chain from around his neck if he wore it on the field. Of course, Crabtree wore the chain, and in key Keeping with his promise, Tlaib tore it right off Crabtree after forcing an incompletion. This was most assuredly not the first time Michael Crabtree was the victim of some serious trash talking. I think we all remember a playoff game three years prior in Seattle when the great and humble Richard Sherman dubbed Michael Crabtree a sorry ass receiver and knighted himself as the best corner in the game. Of course, this came after an intense on field and trash talking battle that ended with Crabtree walking off despondent. But trash talking in big games doesn't always go that well for the corner. And a San Diego Charger found that out the hard way when he was covering the GOAT wide out in Super Bowl 29. Stanley Richard was not the GOAT, far from it in fact. But before the biggest game of his life, he opened his mouth unprovoked to say that the Chargers were going to take Jerry Rice out of the game. Yeah, that didn't happen. Ricky Waters followed that up by bouncing off of Richard for another touchdown, and Rice burned him in the red zone for one more in the second half. Rice ultimately caught 10 balls that day, three of them for touchdowns. Just a quick reminder, don't talk trash if you can't back it up. Dylan Brooks, I am looking at you. Essentially, you have to be really, really good to talk trash to a legend, or you can have brass balls like former Saints safety CJ Gardner Johnson, who got in Tom Brady's face after a fumble in 2021. And there's a reason we're calling it trash talk, not shit. If there's anyone who made that distinction loud and clear, it's another Charger, quarterback Philip Rivers. In between siring children, Rivers played 17 years in the NFL and flapped his gums as much as he did his unprotected dick. But the most intriguing and perhaps diabolical part of Rivers' trash talking game is that he never used a cuss word in the process. Whether he was giving it to Jay Cutler early in his career or jawing with Roquan Smith at the line of scrimmage over a decade later, Rivers preferred terms like dad gum, gosh darn it, shoot and dang it. Rivers never won a Super Bowl and neither did another fierce trash talker who came up during the 90s. John Randall, the Hall of Fame defensive tackle for the Vikings, was relentless in his trash talking on the field. He would go to great lengths to get under the skin of not just his opponents, but even his teammates at practice. Randall once told Steve Young he could smell him during a game. He would do or say anything just to piss off the other team. Randall's career in trash started early against the Raiders when he went head to head with guard Steve Wisniewski, who was known for some backhanded tactics. Wisniewski and Randall were both from around Houston, Texas, and after Wisniewski kept stepping on Randall's feet, Randall vowed to go to Houston and do the same thing to him and his family at their favorite grocery store, which just happened to also be called Randall's. Wisniewski was so shocked that Randall knew his backstory that he got off his game, and Randall took that as a sign that trash talking would give him the extra edge he needed. More on this later. That's the kind of hyper-specific trash talking that got Derek Thomas ejected from a game back 
back in 1998 when Broncos legend Shannon Sharp allegedly kept reciting the phone number of Thomas's girlfriend at the line of scrimmage, sending the Chiefs linebacker into a fit of rage and forcing him to commit three unsportsmanlike penalties on one, yes, one drive. Sharp may be the greatest trash talker of all time, so good that he parlayed his acerbic verbal skills into a long career in television where he went head to head with the ultimate troll Skip Bayless. Okay, that's most of all the best trash talkers. Now let's answer the original question. Does trash talking actually do anything? Trash talking isn't just for show. There's plenty of evidence to suggest that bad mouthing your opponents is as effective as it is obnoxious. The purpose behind this practice is to disrupt opponents' focus, elevate emotions to the point of distraction, and ultimately decrease their performance. Despite its prevalence, few studies have delved into the impact of trash talk on competitive performance. However, Karen McDermott's 2019 doctoral dissertation from the University of Connecticut sheds light on the subject, fitting that the author's name is Karen. According to McDermott, sports are not solely physical games, but also heavily reliant on mental fortitude. Someone who's getting trash talked on the field not only has to battle the physical abilities of their opponent, but they must counter verbally as well, which can take a mental toll in an already taxing game. Recognizing the significance of mental focus, McDermott aimed to investigate the specific effects of trash talk on competitive performance. What exactly does it do? Plot twist, the study didn't use football players as subjects, but rather gamers. McDermott's study employed the racing video game Mario Kart as a test model. The experiment involved 200 men and women between the ages of 18 and 35 who competed under controlled conditions. Some participants were subjected to verbally aggressive insults, while others were not. I can only imagine what those were. The research revealed that trash talking had a negative impact on the game performance of the target competitors. Wow, they dug in personally then. McDermott observed both auditory and cognitive distraction during the video game competition. However, it was specifically the cognitive distraction that affected the competitors' motivation and ability to focus on their task. Yeah, you like that, you fucking idiot. Furthermore, the participants reported it experienced anger and shame as a result of the insults hurled at them. Point in case, Odell Beckham and Josh Norman's battle, in which a clearly rattled Beckham could never seem to gain his composure, which resulted in the G-Men taking a hotly contested loss. Interestingly, McDermott discovered that anger and shame were not mutually exclusive emotions. Rather, they were interconnected, with individuals often experiencing both simultaneously, kind of like most of us after watching corn in the library. In some cases, people felt shame more intensely, leading to anger, which subsequently influenced their performance. Again, not our proudest faps. Sports psychology has long focused on assisting athletes athletes with self-actualization and visualizing success. However, defensive mental drills and strategies to counter verbal attacks have received limited attention. McDermott suggests that the lack of defensive mental training stems from insufficient study on trash talk itself. So maybe all that ribbon from your boys ain't so bad. Trash talk does affect NFL games, and the data backs that up. Just like your mom backs that up, am I right? I'm Five Points Vids, and please subscribe.